All right, today we're gonna to talk about how you can run the RPM filter on these little guys. These little guys mostly come with BL Heli S ESCs. And you could say, well, you can't run the RPM filter. You have to have a BL Heli 32-bit ESC. Well, not anymore. Not with J ESC, you don't. So this little guy is an iFlight 120 RS toothpick style quad. And it has a little BL Heli S ESC in there that makes this puppy run. Uh, what I wanna do is get the RPM filter working on this. So we're gonna use JESC. So what is JESC? Well, the RPM filter was developed by Joe Lucet. Initially, Joe worked with the BL Heli devs to get it RPM filtering in the bi-directional that's required to do that on the BL Heli 32 ESCs, but he also wanted to make it available for BL Heli S ESCs as well. And he's calling that JESC. What it does is it's firmware that kind of couples on to the BL Heli S firmware as well. So you still load the BL Heli S firmware and then the JESC firmware kind of loads a side of it as a separate hex. And with those two pieces of firmware on the ESC, it allows the bi-directional to work again on the BL Heli S suite of ESCs out there. So you can see if you go to jflight.net, this is the website where you can get the JESC software that is a companion uh, side of the BL Heli S firmware that you can put on your ESCs. Now again, this is for only for ESCs that are currently running BL Heli S. If you have a BL Heli 32 ESC, you would just load the BL Heli 32 firmware that supports the bi-directional for the RPM filter. Uh, which we covered in a different video, and I'm going to talk more about that in a later video as well. So this is ESCs that are BL Heli S, so primarily for a 5-inch quad, maybe some older ESCs, but these little micros and the Whoop class, the Toothpick class, the 2-inch, 3-inch, a lot of these uh, smaller quads have the BL Heli S ESCs. They're the forum ones on there, so on and so forth. So this JESC I see is at a, a big advantage for those type of quads, that um, you know, you're kind of stuck with the BL Heli S. Not a lot of these come with BL Heli 32. Now, for browsing out to jflight.net, you can see you can browse down through here, and the JESC is a companion add-on pack that you would purchase to go aside of it. Now, it's I think a pretty reasonable price for a 4-in-1 ESC. It's 594 uh, for a 4-in-1 ESC. For an individual ESC, it's 237. So not too bad. Usually your BL Heli S ESCs are a little cheaper to begin with. So you're saving some dollars there if you're on a five inch quad. And if you have a smaller quad, you kind of really don't have a choice. So this would get you to uh, be able to run the bi-directional, the RPM filter on it. So the first thing you want to do is go all the way to the bottom of the site. And down here, there's a JESC installation instruction. So we're going to click on that. After we browse into here, you can see that it's only four ESCs with an H basically in the firmware. So you could load up your, yeah, if you're, if you're not sure if you have a BL Heli 32 bit ESC or a BL Heli S ESC, if you connect with it with the BL Heli firmware and you see an H in the firmware series name, that means it's BL Heli S. So I have checked this on this quad already and it's definitely BL Heli S. The next thing you want to do is check if your flight controller uh, that's paired with your ESC will support RPM filtering to begin with. So he has a link there that takes you to the Betaflight RPM site, which obviously Joe published this because he was the father of the RPM filter to begin with. And you can go down here and see if your ESC is in here. Now on this specific quad, I have a Maytech and it's a 4 11, the F411 processor chip, not the F405. So I don't see that on here, but we're gonna t take a swag on. I'm gonna see if I can get it to work or work with the devs to get it to work on this sucker. Now, the next thing he's talking about here is getting your flight controller set up with the latest edition of the Betaflight Nightlies to support JESC. So JESC works with an inverted bi-directional uh, protocol. And the reason it's inverted, it's a little safer for uh, just commands. It's a computer science thing, but it's a safer way uh, to relay the data back and forth so you don't have an ESC spin up for no reason or anything like that. So what you will need is Betaflight 4.1. 
We will come back to this. You'd have to load a development build because Beta Flight 4.1 is not released yet, but uh, that's not a big deal. We're gonna do it on this one so you can know which release that I'm using and test it on this. Beta Flight 4.1, I believe, is gonna be released in October 1st, so there's a little bit of time yet there to go for Beta Flight 4.1, but the release candidates should be coming out here in September, I would guess. We're gonna skip this step for now. We're gonna go right down here to download and install JSE Configurator. And you can see here we have a variety of configurators here. I'm gonna download the uh, Win64 zip file. I'm not gonna show you this, but basically you just click it and open the zip file. You would take that zip file and then drag the contents to somewhere on your computer. For myself, I have a local drop, and then I have RC configurators, and then I made a folder called JESC configurator, and I just dropped the content of that zip file into here. The next thing we're gonna do is fire up the JESC configurator, and we're gonna go ahead and plug in our little micro quad here, props off. That will connect, and then we will hit connect here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a battery. Now, be careful on these micros. When you're plugging in these batteries, you know, your VTX is gonna to start to power on, so you gotta be pretty quick or mindful of the VTX heat. I'm gonna go ahead and click read setup, and you can see it read them all. Again, at the top, you can see there's an H in the firmware name, so that indicates it's a BLHeli S. Also here it says BLHeli S. Uh, from here, we're going to hit License All, and that will take us to the JFlight Store. If you have not created an account, you would go ahead and create one. Uh, I am a returning customer, so I'm not going to hit this new customer. I'm going to hit Returning Customer and put in my information here. At this point, you may need to purchase your licenses, your ESC firmware licenses. So I have uh, six, you can see. I'm gonna take up four out of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit activate. What you would do for purchasing, same thing, you go ahead and you know either do individual ESC or you do a four-in-one bundle. You can do a couple four-in-one bundles for, uh, I think for $20, you can get a whole bunch of them, something like that. So look at your purchasing options, go ahead and purchase the uh, firmware license, and then you can apply that to these specific ESCs. You can take the, the stuff off the ESCs as well if you wanted to switch things around at a later time, so don't get too worried about that. But right now, since I have the four licenses available to me, I'm going to go ahead and hit activate ESCs. Okay, so now I have the ESCs activated. Here I'm going to do a flash all, and this will go in and flash the latest version of the J flight to it. So I'm going to hit my J flight version. I'm going to do the J ESC 1.4 and I'm going to hit flash. And this will essentially put a version of BL Heli S on the ESCs that's ready to work with the J flight telemetry module that's going to be loaded here as well in the next step. After that is done processing, and you, again, you may want to have a little fan to blow on your VTX here. I was just off camera blowing on my VTX, I'm a little woozy, but uh, just keep in mind your VTX heat there. After that, you want to go and hit flash all telemetry. Again, hit my telemetry that I want here. So I want the telemetry service 2.0. So I'm going to use the latest there and hit flash. And you can see now that is flashing the telemetry part onto the same ESC. So it's kind of two firmwares. One is open source, it's the BLHeli S firmware, and then the other is the purchased JESC packet that allows the bi-directional communication with your flight controller. After that, I'm going to go ahead and hit disconnect. And you should hear the little startup tones and you should be good to go. So we have now the latest version of BL Heli S on there that works with the JESC and also the JESC module that gives it the bi-directional communication. So now let's go into the flight. Oh, make sure to unplug your battery. Again, VTX heat, they get really hot, like smoking hot. Probably doesn't help that I have it on 200 milliwatts either. Next, I wanna pop into the Betaflight configurator. I want to change this top Make sure you have show unstable releases. I'm in expert mode and change this to development. I'm going to go ahead and pick my flight controller, which is going to be the Maytech F411. Uh, yours will vary. And then go ahead and click that. And then I'm going to load the nightly build 1822. So you can see it right here on the screen. So if you're wary of nightly builds, what I would recommend is going with 1822. By the time you watch this video, there might be other ones, but you'll know through this video, my experience is that 1822 is fine. Pick that, hit load firmware, and then hit flash firmware. 
Um, mine's a little special because of my computer. I have to go download it manually and do it a different way, but that's what you would do. Load and flash. Okay, going back to the installation instructions, you can see we went down through starting the configurator. We made sure to purchase our licenses. We went flashed all, flashed all telemetry. Uh, we didn't have any issues, but if we would, we'd save a debug log uh, so you could submit with a, an issue request. Now we are down at the uh, visit the RPM filter instructions, so we're going to go ahead and click on that. I have my firmware loaded, the latest version of Betaflight. We're going to come down to here. Uh, I have the Maytech. I do not have the 411, but I have the, the I don't see a 411 on here, but I see a 405. It's kind of close. Let's see what happens. If I click on the 405, you can see there's no DMA or timer remapping here without getting into too much of it. That's what those snippets were needed for. So we're going to spin the dice and see if this works. So go ahead and copy all of this and go into the configurator, go into the CLI and hit paste here and paste that in and then type in save. After that, we want to spin up our motors and check to see if we get the RPM telemetry data back. So we're going to type, we're going to search for Google Betaflight debug modes. That will take us to this wiki that I created because I can never remember. And this is just a rundown of all the different debug modes. This is the command we will need to see the RPM data. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that to my clipboard, come over back to here, go to the motors tab. Uh, props are off, which I showed before. I'm going to go ahead and plug back in again. Make sure my battery is clear of it here. And then I will spin my motors up a little bit. And then go into the CLI here with the motor spinning. Hit info. And bam! We can see the ERPM data, the RPM data, the Hertz and number of invalid packets so boom we got it <laughs> and to get your motors to stop spinning if you just leave the cli tab it will stop the motors and then you can unplug that battery again don't forget about that vtx that's powered up when you're plugged in and getting really hot uh, especially on the iFlight here so yeah, so you can see that, hey, we got the JESC on there and now we have the bi-directional data so we can enable the RPM filter and we're off to the races. Well, that is it on how to get up and running with JESC for your BL Heli S ESCs and RPM bi-directional telemetry for the RPM filter. Thanks everybody. Uh, do check out JESC. Give Joe some support. He is a, a major contributing dev to the Betaflight project. So a lot of the stuff that folks are, folks are flying, that's because of Joe's efforts along with a lot of other people as well. Of course, one of the big things that I see is uh, the, you know two major contributions to the project that I see that Joe has made that really impact almost everybody is uh, iTerm Relax. That's, that was a big one to uh, really uh, introduce iTerm clamping and then of course the RPM filtering so um, we have you know notch filters that can exactly track right on top of the peak motor noise uh, getting the RPM data you know right from the modems themselves and you can have a notch per motor so as one motor spinning up versus another one in a sweeping turn or whatever that RPM notch is tracking each motor based on the RPM it's reporting back to the flight controller. Uh, it's proven to uh, be very effective in tracking noise and suppressing it with, again, those RPM notches. Thanks, everybody, and I hope this helped.